Okay, everybody, we are live according to YouTube. So quick mic check, can you hear me? I see a few people out there already. All right, everybody, welcome back to the final installment of The Plant Lady. So we've been working on The Plant Lady for the past six months, and let me just show you what The Plant Lady is. So The Plant Lady is a quilt that we started back in the summer, back in June, and it was a block of the month. And it was actually more than one block per month, but we started with a first video on getting started. Then we created pots. I went over some thread painting and some applique techniques. And then several people have said, oh my goodness, how are we gonna lay this out? My original intent was for it to just be laid out just the way you see it, the plants on a background. But several people had the idea, what if we had a different layout? And so I started researching and voila, this is the handout that you should be pulling down. And it is the Plant Lady handout on attic windows. So if you have it, um, this is the perfect, perfect layout for all of our blocks. And so today I'm going to show you how to create the layouts um, for this particular um, setting for those of you who want to do it this way. Now these individual blocks can be done um, just as a small wall hanging or a mug rug. If you want to frame two or three of these, this is the perfect art project. So you have a, a complete list of supplies, but the most important are the colors. So if you have the, the colors, then you're going to be okay. So color placement for this particular handout is important. So let me zoom in. So we have three colors in this handout. We have the lightest color, which goes on the bottom of this window sash. That's what gives this the 3D illusion. Then you have a medium strip that you put on the left, and then you have a darker or a contrasting fabric that you put out here that's the darkest one to make it look like they're, you're peeping through a window. Then you can do whatever you want on the border. I said you could do a botanical print. Um, I'm actually going to show you mine, but all right, friends, let's go ahead and get started. Say hello to each other, and let me show you what we've got tonight. All right, so there you guys can see, right? And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out all of the pieces that I'm going to need. So first, I'm going to take my blocks, and my blocks are a little bit bigger than what I need. But I'm going to trim every one of my blocks. If you follow along on the instructions, I'm trimming mine eight and a half by 10. But if you wanted to make them eight by 10, or if you wanted to make them a little bit bigger, maybe nine by 11, that's fine. I found that eight by 10 fits inside my attic windows the best. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of each of my blocks so that I'm centering the design inside the window. So I'm going to take a ruler and this particular design is about five inches across. I can see that with my ruler and I'm going to line this up with the bottom of the window sash. So if you looked at the handout, the plants will literally sit right at the bottom of the window sash. And so let me show you what I mean by that. So if you look over here at this one, which is the one I'm working on, the third one, kind of in the middle right here. So what I need is I need to put that plant so that the little feet are touching the bottom and the empty space is up on top. So that means that I'm not going to worry so much about this down here. I just need to have at least a fourth of an inch or a half an inch if I want a big seam. But then I need to make sure that I have space for 10 inches and I do and I'm looking at this just to kind of see how much clearance I'm going to have so it, this is where I make my decision do I want to make all of my blocks like 11 or do I want to make them 10 that'll change the size of my quilt a little bit but not too much so I've decided that that I'm going to do mine eight and a half by ten and a half just to give me a little bit of wiggle room and so some of my pots have smaller feet and so the plant fits better but for my purposes, I'm going to go ahead and write that down. I'm going to make all of mine 8.5 by 10.5. And I'm putting a note because that's different than what's on there. 
right? I, th I think I want it just a, a tiny bit bigger. All right, so how do you trim one of these blocks? Well, when I applicate it, you can see there's less fabric on this side and more fabric on this side. So I'm gonna find the center point and then I'm gonna measure out. And then I'm gonna find the center point and I'm gonna measure out. So if I'm gonna do eight and a half, I need to find my center point, which is like two and a half, because it's a five inch. So right about the middle of this peak. And so I'm going to measure four and a quarter because eight and a half divided by two is four and a quarter. So I'm gonna measure four and a quarter this way and trim, and then four and a quarter this way and trim. And so that's important. So whenever you have a block that you need to trim, you need to do a little bit of math. And so I use a long, long ruler. And so I'm gonna line that up with my four and a quarter. And so I'm gonna line that up. I'm making it straight down here at the bottom. And so now that I know that it's four and a quarter, I'm just gonna trim off the excess just like this. And I'm lining it up with the bottom just to make sure that it's straight. And so that's going to go away. And my mat that I'm working on is not quite big enough, but it's, it's going to be okay. So now I'm going to rotate this around and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do four and a quarter from this point. And so I need four and a quarter the other direction. And so the same spot where I lined it up, I have my four. And sometimes the little lines on your, on your um, ruler have these writings, so just line it up. So I'm going to do four, and this is pretty straight across here. And then I'm going to slide it to a quarter because it was four and a quarter. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim that side. So once I have four and a quarter on both sides, and that's pretty straight, then I'm gonna go ahead and sliver trim it. And so what I should have here is I should have a block that measures eight and a half across the middle, and that one does. If you look at my ruler, that's eight and a half, and so that's eight and a half across the center, and it's fairly straight. Now I'm gonna trim this bottom off, and I'm gonna give it a tiny bit more than a fourth of an inch because I don't want to I don't want to chop off the little feet so I'm gonna give it a fourth of an inch across this way I'm gonna line it up on the sides and then I'm going to just slide it over just a scant just a tiny tiny bit more and I'm making sure that those little feet are straight and that it's straight over here and I'm gonna chop off the bottom Once I've chopped off the bottom, now I can measure, and I'm gonna measure 10 and a half inches. And so I'm gonna take my ruler, and this has half inch marks, and I'm gonna take 10 and a half. I'm just gonna kind of check out, see what I have above. And I like what, I, what I'm seeing. 10 and a half is right here. So I'm gonna just put a little mark and then 10 and a half on this side is a little mark, and that's what I'm gonna to use to line it up. So I'm gonna take my big ruler, or even a short one, and I'm just going to line up those two dots that were 10 and a half dots for me, and make sure that my ruler is nice and straight, and I'm gonna chop that off. So now I have a block that's eight and a half inches wide by 10 and a half inches. And it's fairly centered. If I look, this, this has a tiny bit of space over there, but I'm not too worried about it. It looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna start building my sashing. And my sashing will be built using um, a light, medium, and a dark. And so the light goes on the bottom, right? Just like this and it's two and a half inches wide. So the meat, the lightest goes on the bottom, that's two and a half inches wide. It's gonna have a medium on the side that's two and a half inches wide, just like this. And then I'm gonna have to create 
a little half square triangle so that I have that miter to give my window depth. When I'm done doing the window wells, I will add this green as my sashing. And so this is what I'm considering my dark. So this is my light, this is my medium, and this is what I'm using as my dark. Now I could go even darker than that and I could use something like this dark, dark green, but I think for now I'm gonna stick with this um, olive because my um, sashing on the outside, my border print that's a botanical, is this one. And so if you look at this um, olive green next to this one, this is much darker. And so I think that will give it the, the contrast. So this is my border print that I picked, which is like a blue that has a light blue, a medium blue, and a dark blue, and I think that'll look really nice. All right, so let's build those sashes. Um, I'm gonna give you a shortcut today, and since mine will have several, several uh, sashes, so I'm doing a total of 12 of these blocks, then I need 12 sashes at least. And so I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna take two of these strips and I'm gonna put them, doesn't matter if they're supposed to be right sides together, but it doesn't really matter because these are solids, but sometimes fabric, if you look at it carefully, will have a rougher side and a smoother side, even solids, so I try to put the smoother sides together. You can see the weave. And so both of these look like they're the correct size. And I'm going to Sew these a quarter inch apart on both sides, and I'm just gonna do a half a strip so you can see the process. You don't need, um, you don't need to do a half a strip at home. You can do the entire strip, but I'm just gonna do a half a strip so that I can show you. So I'm just gonna trim this off, and I'm gonna give them a quick press and make sure that they're nice and flat when I start um, sewing. And I'm gonna use a little bit of a contrasting thread so you can see what I'm doing. And this is just from my, my fabric was folded. This fabric has been washed, but not starched. Um, you can starch it if you want to, but it's not necessary. If you use um, good heavy fabric, it's not necessary. And so I'm just gonna give it a, little, a quick press to make sure that it's nice and even. And then th those edges are even. And then I'm just gonna sew a quarter of an inch down the right and a quarter of an inch down the left and I'm gonna make myself a little tube. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It won't take me but a minute here. Let me switch. Can you guys see my camera? I moved my camera angle because my hand kept getting in the way and I don't like that. Alright, so I'm just going to take and I'm going to drop that down. Pro tip, make sure you grab those threads if you are starting so you can avoid bird's nests and other messes. All right, so if you're a new quilter, you just grab that right there. And there you have it. So I'm just going to sew. My stitch length is a 2.0. It's a small stitch length. And I'm lining it up with this. This is why I use this seam tape. Just line it up and keep it straight. And if your, um, your fabric wants to shift, you're just going to take your fingers and you're gonna tease it back into place. And it does that. Your sewing machine wants to pull it kind of every direction. And so you're just gonna to have to pause and take your fingers and tease it into place and then keep going. That's probably one of the best tips that I learned was to um, use your fingernails and just kind of tease your fabric into place. When you get to the end, you don't have to do anything other than stop. You can even sew it closed. It doesn't matter. I'm going to chop that off. And you're going to go to the other side. And you're going to stop. And you're going to sew a quarter of an inch from the other edge on this side.
I let my machine do all of the work. New quilters want to push and pull their um, pieces through the machine. If you notice, I just let the machine drive. A lot of times I'm not even, uh, I'm just barely touching the fabric. And there we go. I'm just going to pull that and we're ready for the next step. So I'm heating up my iron and I'm gonna check the chat. Let me see if we have any questions. Hi everybody, who's out there? All right, so now that I have it, can you guys see? I'm stitching with dark green thread so you guys can see what I'm doing. I have got a piece that's closed now on both sides and it's two and a half inches wide, right sides together. And now I'm gonna do the little magic. So I'm gonna do something that uh, I like to do because it's, it creates a lot of blocks really, really quickly. And so I'm gonna grab, you can do a rectangular ruler, a square ruler, it doesn't even matter. As long as you have a 45 degree line which this one does. So this one has a 45 degree line. And so I'm gonna take that 45 degree line and I'm gonna drop it right along that edge, the bottom edge. And then I'm gonna cut up and then I'm gonna cut down. And so I'm just gonna line it along that bottom and that makes a great big half square triangle. So if you need to make a bunch of like three inch half square triangles, this is a great way to do it. Now you have to handle them gently because they're on the bias, but that's not a problem because we're gonna trim these down. And so because they're on the bias at this point, if you want to, you can spritz them with some starch. And so this is one time that I do recommend starch. And like I said, just handle them gently, set them aside, and you can cut a whole bunch of these and they're going to be a little bit oversized so we're going to trim and so now I'm going to flip it I have a 45 degree angle I'm going to flip it on the other side and I'm going to line it up down here with the bottom and I'm just going to give it a trim and you need one half square triangle for every window Then I just flip it over and I do the same thing again I just line that up that 45 degree line on the bottom that peak gets lined up with that edge. And I flip it over here this way. And you pop that seam at the top like this. And you get these beautiful little half square triangles. And they're all identical. If you have a, a nice straight uh, seam on both sides and you um, have nice consistent strips, then you're gonna have nice, even little blocks. And so just take them all. And um, like I said, this is a bias. So you have to handle with care. And I just spray them a, a little bit of starch. And I usually let them air dry, but I don't have to right now. It's like I said, I'm going to um, trim these up. So that, look at how quickly I made three half square triangles. So if you have a quilt that involves lots of half square triangles, this is one way of doing it. I don't like to do this method for giant half square triangles just because they end up too wobbly, but if you have a lot of small ones, this is a great method. And so the first thing that I do is I just press it because um, it has starch on there, and so I'm trying to dry that starch. So I'm gonna press it. And if you notice, I'm gonna handle it from the center rather than from the edges. So there you have it. And now look, super easy. I have three little crisp half square triangles and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna take my finger and I'm just gonna gently open them just like that. And I can handle this middle kind of rough because guess what, my bias is now on the edges. Now some, some quilters don't like that, but I'm okay with it because I get some really nice half square triangles. And so this is nice and crisp and starchy now And look at that half square triangle. You really just have to, to nip um, the little dog ears 
and this should measure around three inches, maybe three and a half. And look at that. You can make an entire quilt out of these. If you had a bunch of leftover jelly roll strips, you can make a beautiful scrappy quilt literally just using this method. Every time you get a couple of extra stray strips, sew it to a background, a light and a dark, and over time you would have an entire basket full of these little half square triangles. Super easy. All right, and then I have one more. And like I said, you could make 20 of these in no time flat. I get a dozen out of two full size strips, so I get 12 of these. And so that is how you make these look, guys. So once I have them, you can use your clapper, but they lay nice and flat, and I'm gonna trim these little bunny ears, and then we'll measure. So these should trim down to two and a half inches. And so whenever you have a block, and it makes you make those little tiny half square triangles that are like two, two inches by two inches, or two and a half by two and a half, this is a great way to make a whole bunch of them really quick. And they end up, look at how precise they are. So they end up being almost identical. Do you see that? I love this method. So this is how I like to make them. You could literally make an entire quilt. As long as your seam is consistent, these are all gonna end up the same. Look, pretty quick. All right, so now that I have these, I have to trim these down to two and a half inches square. So I'm just gonna use my rectangle ruler and I'm gonna make them two and a half inches. So I'm just gonna line this up. There's a, a 45 degree line on my ruler and I'm just gonna line that up with the centerpiece to make sure that I'm trimming it two and a half. And so I'm going to line that up with a two and a half inch line right there. And I'm just gonna give them a little trim. If you have one of those little rulers that has like a, a two and a half inch grid that's even better or even a square actually let's try this square so this square has a two and a half inch kind of uh, line and then the center so I'm gonna flip this and I'm gonna line this up with the bottom where it says two and a half inches make sure that this is lined up in the center and I'm gonna trim off the excess and this is how I know that my uh, pieces are gonna be 100% accurate now this does involve a little bit of waste, but it's only one strip and it's there's very little waste in this quilt, so I'm okay with it. If you were doing a, a giant quilt, then you might wanna do your strips a little bit smaller, like two and a quarter, and then you would have less trimming. Get a sharp uh, rotary cutter, friends, because this doesn't wanna cut. All right, so there I have it, a perfect two and a half inch. And I'm gonna cut just one more, just so you can see, you have that diagonal, line it up, make sure that that is centered, that these are straight, slide it down and trim part of it one way and then part of it the other way. That way you know that your block is nice and straight. And this is one of my favorite methods for making half square triangles. I just find that it's super, super accurate and very speedy. This little tiny rotary cutter does not want to cooperate with me today. Probably needs a new blade, huh? Plus I'm sitting kind of in an awkward position. I'm kind of short. And so sometimes in order for me to be in view of the camera, I have to lean forward a little bit. All right, there we go. So now that I have these, now I've got to line up my little sashing with my border. And so I'm gonna want the lightest towards the bottom, just like this. And I'm gonna have my darker color going the opposite direction. And so for my sashing, this is how I'm gonna line it up. And so I have to join these, right? Just like this, because what I'm trying to create is that window in the corner. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the bottom, and I said it was eight and a half inches, so I need a piece 
that's eight and a half inches long. Some people like to just throw this on there and sew and then trim it off. You can do that. But sometimes that can create waves. So either way works, it doesn't matter. Some people will just literally just chop it off, flip it over, give it some trimming space, which you can do like this, and then sew that on there. So now I'm gonna sew this onto here. And I'm gonna sew it from this side so that I can see where the feet are. And this one is ready to go. So now I'm gonna go sew that up and I'll come back. So let me flip my camera view. I should have used a leader and an ender, people. Let's not lose our thread. A leader and an ender prevents all of this from happening and you save thread. All right, so pull that out of the way and I'm gonna get started. Tease that with your fingers. All right, let's snip that off of there and let's see what we have. Now that I have this, before I do anything else, I'm gonna trim off the excess. So I'm gonna flip it this direction. You use this method, flip it to the back and trim it on this side. Just to make sure that this is nice and straight and straight going this way and that you're not getting a weird sashing strip. And let me flip the other side. And I make sure that it's straight. And now I'm ready to give this a press. So I can just take my finger, run it across there, and I'm pressing towards the sash. And I like how my feet are touching but didn't get chopped off. Now to this side, what I have to do is I have to sew my two and a half inch square that's been trimmed up and I have to sew it so that the 45 degree line is facing towards this little guy and so now I'm gonna sew these two together so I have to sew this one to this one before I attach it to this side so I'm just gonna take this over to the machine and I want to make sure that I'm checking. So I'm sewing the blue to the blue and this gray to the gray. And so I'm going to make sure that I'm facing it the correct direction. Just double check so you don't end up seam ripping. And that is all that you need to do. And now you can line this one up and press it. So let me heat up the iron. And be careful, friends, pressing on your um, mat underneath. I typically don't like to because your mat can get totally warped. Now I need to have one that's 10 and a half inches, right? So this piece here should be at least 10 and a half inches. And so I'm going to press it with this still attached. I'm just going to cut it 11, right? So I'm just going to make sure that I have plenty over here. And so this will hang off. This will be excess and it will get trimmed later. All right. I'm going to look at this and now I'm ready to attach because I pressed to the dark side on this one, then I'm gonna to have to press this towards the blue. 
And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can nest this seam, right? So I'm just gonna take my finger and I'm going to flatten that seam. This seam's this way. This seam is going down, so this seam is going up and that'll ensure that my points match perfectly in that corner. And that's one thing that I do pay close attention to is which direction I press. I like this iron because it's lightweight and it's cordless. And so when I'm constructing my blocks, it makes it easy to do. All right, so now you see we have a little extra. I'm gonna flip it down and I'm gonna pop a pin right here at this intersection to make sure that I am not chopping off that half square triangle. There's nothing worse than a half square triangle that's blunted. And one thing that I love is a nice flat sashing. So I'm just gonna pop up another pin over there that keep it straight to keep it from wobbling and then one more over here on this side and then I won't have to hardly touch it at all when it's in the machine. Now I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch and I'll be ready for the next step. And so in here it goes. I'm gonna stop and pause. There's like a little intersection right where my half square triangle has the seams that meet. And so you wanna make sure that you don't chop it off right there. And so we're going to take this over here, give it one final trim. And this is all you've got to do to all of your blocks before you put the final bit of sashing. So let me show you what I've got now. So now I have this. Let me put my pins in here and get them out of the way so I don't stab myself. And so now with it facing down, one of the things that I like to do is I like to heat it up and then I like to flip it. And so by doing it this way, it prevents my little corner from getting chopped off. And there's like a little place where all the seams meet and you just wanna watch that one. And so I love how this ends up. I'm gonna press away from the white and so I like to press from the back. I take my fingers and I tease this one towards me like this without stretching it. And then I go down that seam all the way down and that reduces the bulk in the middle. And that way when I quilt this, I'll be able to give it some dimension, right? So that sashing will have the illusion of sticking out a little bit further than that plant. And so that's why I'm pressing towards the sashes. If you have this little intersection here and you feel like it has too much bulk, you can always um, take this and, and pull it open. And by doing that, you can reduce the bulk when you get ready to, um, when you get ready to quilt it. If you want to, you can just press this one little seam open. I'm not a seam open fan, but if you want to do that to reduce the bulk in this little intersection, you can do that. But like I said, I'm not a seams open kind of a friend. I like my seams closed. And so then I know that when I get ready to do this, I'm going to echo. So I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on either side rather than right there at that intersection. All right, friends, and that's how you make this um, attic window layout. Let me ride this up so you can see. So then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this skinny two inch piece and this will get sewn on this side across each one. And then I will sew one long continuous piece all the way across the rows to join them. And so this is how I'm going to give my quilt that illusion that these plants are sitting inside of a window. And this is called the attic window layout. This works great with um, fancy blocks. If you have those um, 
patterns that have cute little pictures or images you can fussy cut them and then make them an attic window you can make these in any size you can make them square you can make them rectangle um, you can make them even long this way but this is a perfect layout for this particular set of blocks so now I'm going to get busy putting the rest together and when we come back in January for the mystery stars I will show you my finished quilt and this is going to be a gift for one of my daughters all right, friends, this is it. Super easy attic window. Um, this is the easiest method you can do. Make these in bulk. Some people like to miter these. I suggest you don't. It's too much, too much work. But um, I think this is going to um, show off these blocks really nicely. And so they're gonna be the focal point. And that's it, super easy. See how quick that was? So please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Um, if you are working on the plant lady or if you haven't even started, you can go ahead and start the plant lady. It's never too late. You can always go back. Um, and so you can see the handouts are still in there. I put all the links. So it has all of the plants. You can go through and click on them all. It has the instructions. It has how much material you're going to need. You can go back and trace all of these and watch some of the videos. Super easy, super fun. You're gonna love that. All right, everybody, that's it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. I'm gonna be finishing my plant lady and I'm gonna be working on more mini stockings. And I made a bigger stocking template and I put it on the website in case you guys wanna make your stockings just. And uh, I hope you enjoy making your plant lady quilt. Mine is turning out really cute, I like it. And I will see you guys next time. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like. And if you have any friends who love free and easy quilting, you can send them my way. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Bye-bye.